What's your drink of choice? A Negroni. I was going to say the same thing. Bagliato. Mmm. Yeah. With Prosecco in it. Oh, stunning. Yeah. I love that this question was asked so close to Reformation Day. So October 31st is Halloween, but it's also Reformation Day. It is the day when Martin Luther nailed the 95 Theses onto a door of a church in 1517. Now, don't confuse Martin Luther with Martin Luther King Jr. They are from very different time periods, and Martin Luther was in Germany. So at that time, the Roman Catholic Church was getting kind of corrupt. One of the things they were doing was selling indulgences, trying to get people to pay for the souls of their loved ones who had died who were in purgatory to try to get them out of purgatory. Also, the Bible wasn't in the common language of the people, so people couldn't study the Bible on their own. So Martin Luther is one of the reasons that we have Protestants now. He wasn't trying to start a new religion. He was just trying to reform the Catholic Church. He didn't like some of the things that they were teaching. There's a pretty good movie about Martin Luther that I liked a lot that came out when I was younger. And I think you should definitely check it out if you're curious to learn more about the history of the Lutheran faith in general. Now, the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod, also known as the LCMS, came into existence in 1847. And I guess most of their churches were in Missouri, so they called it the Missouri Synod. But it's all over the U.S. now, so it's not just a Missouri thing anymore. But some people see the LCMS as kind of traditional. And we do hold fast to the teachings of the Bible. We take it literally in a lot of ways. It is the second largest denomination of Lutherans in the United States. The largest being the ELCA, which stands for Evangelical Lutheran Church of America, which is, um, you know, some people call it a little bit more liberal than the LCMS. But they just interpret things a little bit differently. And that's why there was this branching off. All that being said, I am not one of those people who thinks you must be LCMS to go to heaven or you must be Lutheran to go to heaven. No, I think that basically all Christians go to heaven as long as you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He is the Savior. He died on the cross and rose again for you. You know, we can argue about things like when should someone be baptized, you know, as an infant or as an adult or somewhere in between. We can argue about all these different little things, but it's not matters of salvation in my opinion. I think that as long as you got the basics, as long as you understand who Jesus is and what he did for you, you're all going to be in heaven with me one day. So uh, let me know if you have any other questions about my faith. I'd love to talk to you guys more about it. I enjoy a good theological discussion, so thank you for this Lutherans aren't the only ones who reject the Book of Maccabees. Uh, pretty much all Protestants do. In our Bible, you don't find that book in there. So it's very commonly not accepted by a lot of different Christians. Also, purgatory just doesn't make sense when you think about the teachings of Jesus himself. When the thief was on the cross and he was you know, close to dying, and he turned to Jesus and said, hey, remember me when you come into your kingdom? Jesus didn't say, well, I assure you after some time in purgatory, you will be able to earn your way to heaven. No, he said, today you will be with me in paradise. That thief on the cross was going to be with Jesus in heaven. Like, if there was no purgatory coming for him. So if a thief is going to get straight into heaven without having to go through purgatory first, I think it's safe to say that everyone does not have to go through purgatory in order to get to heaven. Now, Martin Luther, he did not want to start a new religion. He did not say, I am now creating the Lutheran Church. He actually wanted to fix the Catholic Church. He wanted to you know, stop the false teachings and make it more true. The Catholic Church excommunicated him because they didn't like the things that he was teaching. And from what I understand, eventually his excommunication ended. So yeah, maybe he was still technically Catholic, just like Jesus was a Jew. Jesus never said, hey, I'm starting the Christian faith. So if you thought my previous video was saying all these terrible bad things about the Roman Catholic Church, that was not my intent. Um, it was pretty corrupt back then. I'm not saying the Roman Catholic Church is still corrupt today. 
I love Catholics as my brothers and sisters in Christ. And so if you are a Catholic that's commenting, I'm assuming you are because of the way you, you know, worded everything, then um, I love you. And if you want to keep discussing things with me, we can go ahead and do that. <laughs> Thanks for your comment. I basically grew up in the church. My mom and dad were both members of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, and I've been a member my whole life. A lot of people, when they talk about their faith, will talk about, you know, the moment they came to Christ, the moment they accepted him into their lives. But for me, there was never a specific moment where I became saved. I was always a part of the church. It was always a part of who I am. I feel like I had that faith ever since I was a baby. In some ways, I relate a lot to Timothy in the Bible. Um, Paul wrote a letter to him and said, From infancy you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. And so if you are a Christian, but you've never had this specific moment in your life where you said, this is the moment I decided to follow God, or this is the moment I realized that I was saved, like that is okay. That doesn't make your experience as a Christian invalid. You don't have to have a specific defining moment that you were converted or that you came to Christ. Some of us grow up in the faith and it's just always a part of who we are. And we might have up and downs in our faith life, I mean, my faith has not always been perfect. There have been a lot of times where I've doubted God, where I've become angry with Him, where I've wondered, am I in the right denomination? But as I continue to grow, the more I learn about the Lutheran faith, the more I realize, yeah, I think this is the right, you know, denomination for me. This is the one that really seems to follow what the Bible says. This is the one that really seems to get a lot of things right. Now, I don't think that Lutherans are perfect. I don't think there's any, you know, denomination that is perfect, but there's a lot of emphasis on being saved by grace through our faith, not as a result of works, that there's nothing we can do to earn our salvation, but Jesus did it all for us. But anyways, thank you for letting me share my faith with you guys again. Hey, uh, excuse me. Huh? You know what the day is? The day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice. And be glad.